Hi everyone. So we have already talked about data types in Python and basic operators. Now let's talk about variable and constant in Python. So we are going to cover these topics. Variables, how we can define names of those variables, how we can create variables, how we can print multiple variable assignment and few more things. And we will also talk briefly about constant. So let me just copy these topics here uh, so that we remember. Yeah, you, uh, I also want to show you some markdown tricks that when you copy paste these kind of things, even with the bullet points, but the text here appears continuously with no separation between those things. And uh, if you want to give them numbering earlier, we have seen that you can give numbering from here, one, two, three, or you can just write here, one, two, three, or if you just want to add bullet points, you need to use dash here. So this is going to make one bullet point here and here again two bullet point and so on. So simultaneously I am going to show you some tips and tricks or some markdown uh, concepts or few things which uh, will make you better with Python slowly and gradually. So let me uh, make these hyphens here. So you can see this is the preview and when we run, run means shift plus enter, now it is nicely organized. And this was my first heading because I have used a hash here. For subheading we can use double hash. Now let's talk about variable. Variable and constant, we understand that variable is anything which varies over time, which is not fixed, which can change values. And constant is anything which is fixed always. For example, in a data set like this we have name age marital status experience and income so we have data of different people here just for the sake of simplicity here we just have four observation so age is a variable because everyone have different age we might have same values also but age is a variable here marital status is again a variable so all these are variables so usually when you see data in the form of table, all the columns, most of the times are variables. We might rarely uh, come across the column in which all the values are seen. Here the data uh, looks ugly and uh, not fit for mathematical operations because we see some text here and some dollar sign and some comma things here. But uh, here is the clean up version of the data. We are not talking about how to clean that data right now. Here is another example. So uh, in this case, I am... I have written name, quantity and total bill. So quantity is a variable here. It's going to be varied and price is the same thing. For example, there is a sale. Every book in a bucket is $50. These are the person who are going to buy the books and John is buying three books. Max is still uh, not in a mood to spend any money on books. Rajesh is seven and Shasha is really a book lover. Uh, she's buying 20 books in bulk because the price is really low. And when we compute the total bill, here is the total bill. So this quantity and this total bill, it's a variable because it is changing value for everyone. But the price is same, price is constant. So that is the theoretical concept of variable. And uh, you might be already knowing that when we compute uh, this kind of thing in Excel, we use absolute referencing those who are from excel they might know absolute and relative referencing when they work with constant or variable now enough of theory let's talk about python yup so in python also we have variables anything that varies and how we assign variables for example x is my variable x equal to 5 so x is simply a variable which takes value 5 and if i just run this code i am going to get nothing in the output because i am just assigning my variable right i am giving some value to this variable so variable is basically the placeholder which is stored the data value right so i have stored value 5 but i have not asked anything to do it here if i want to see the value of this variable i need to explicitly use print command and if i print x i see that now it is printing 5 otherwise another way of printing this is i can simply use x here and still it is going to print the thing earlier in python version 2 uh, we used to write print without the parenthesis we used to write it like this print x and it used to print but in uh, python version 3 it throws an error if you print it like this so if you are taking a code from internet somewhere you are reading from some other source and you see that kind of print that is from older version in today's version we need to use the parenthesis right so this is 
how you assign value you can obviously assign any value to that variable and you can reassign also for example if you want to reassign value to the variable how you can do that instead of 5 now i want to make it 10 so let's make it 10 and let's see what happens now it is printing 10 so now in python's memory the value of x is 10 whenever you are using this for some calculation it is now going to use 10 so suppose i am doing x plus 20 it is now going to give me the result 30 because the value is changed so you can change the value and you can always reassign now what happens if uh, you have x equal to 10 and y equal to something suppose 20 nothing because it's not going to print anything but suppose i am going to add here x and y is it going to print both no because when we uh, use this kind of command python only prints the last one whatever is the last statement it is going to print that only so if we want to see the value of x also and y also what can be done we need to use print here for printing the value of x so if i use print x now i can see it's printing the value of x and it's printing the value of y usually uh, we use print y also but we can avoid using print statement for the last line but for rest of the lines if we are printing multiple things we need to explicitly use print function few more things about print function we will talk shortly in the course and uh, you can do calculation so now we have x and y two variables so obviously we can do any mathematical calculation with those so for example i am doing x multiplied by y i am going to get 200 so any mathematical operators which are applicable we can use those and let's check what we need to do yeah we have talked about yeah we need to talk about naming convention so as of now i've just given the name x and y why because i am from mathematics and i uh, really love x and y but usually when we have data set and we are doing something actually with the data we prefer to give some meaningful name to the data right and what do we mean by meaningful name for example these kind of names which we have seen name quantity total bill price age so what the data is referring that should be the name of that variable so your variable names can be like this a is equal to 20 experience is equal to two years salary is equal to something uh, maybe in twenty thousand dollars here we are not using dollars or comma or anything we are trying to make it simple and then obviously we can print all these things print age print xp and so on but suppose you want to explicitly specify experience in the current company or current organization typically if you want to use two words experience current or something like that experience with r experience with python something like that years of experience in a particular skill so how can you use you can't use like this experience python this is not a valid variable name just try to do that it is going to give you an error because you have used space here so whenever you are defining variables you can't use a space so there are options you can use underscore here now it's a new variable x exp underscore python so you can use underscore or otherwise you can use capital letters because uh, in python the variable names are case sensitive so let me just uh, write here there are basically three rules for variable names one is variable names can have letters or numbers or underscore second is variable name should not start with a number so you can start with a letter or an underscore and third thing to remember is it's case sensitive so let's just try if i'm going to give the name to test equal to four so it's not a valid name because i'm trying to start with a number but if i start with underscore it's completely acceptable right and uh, i can give this name i can also give this name and now these two are two different variables let me just check so it's going to print two different values because we have used caps lock here and using underscore to separate words is commonly used in python and it's uh, as per the pep convention also in uh, last video we have talked about pep is the style guide for writing uh, beautiful python code although people also use this kind of variable name where they use capital letter to separate the next word and this is known as camel cap formatting this is also valid we don't get any error in this but we should prefer using underscore instead of this because i also believe that uh, using capital letters in between 
is time consuming we need to be careful where uh, is capital and where is small and we might get more typo underscore is better right and what about if i want to define multiple variables together for example i want to make x equal to 5 and y equal to 10 can we do that like this we get an error it says can't assign to literal so uh, let's check what can be done so if i do it like this x comma y is equal to 5 comma 10 now it's acceptable to python so we can just print x and we can print y too and it's going to take both the values 5 and 10 so if you are new to python instead of trying to remember anything everything instead of trying to learn everything and put it into your memory just try and experiment with the things and see what works what doesn't work and when you start using these things regularly you will really uh, feel comfortable and you will slowly start to remember these things so i don't prefer remembering the exact syntax because when we start learning multiple languages at times we get confused uh, between the even the basic things that's completely okay we can always google we can always look at the documentation you should just have the confidence that you can work in that and whenever you see some error you can find out the ways to debug that so here uh, i was thinking whether i can print x and y together with just one print statement so i tried doing that and i'm getting 5 and 10 two values but uh, uh, you can see that uh, these are just separated by space there is no clear distinction between what is the value of x and y so we will see in the next video about the print statement how we can make it beautiful and even more readable so that's enough about variables let me see if we have missed anything print we will talk later reassign deleting yeah deleting we will talk local and global variable this we will talk later when we will talk about functions so Keep watching the videos uh, when we will talk about function we will discuss the scope of the variable and all these stuff. Now deleting the variable and then I will talk about constant. So I have so many variables now in my memory. So for example x is 5 y is 10. So if I want to delete x now I don't need x. So simple function is del 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 for delete and del x when i do that now x is no more in the python memory and if i try to print x now it says that x is not defined so simply you can use that uh, let me just uh, and if i want to delete multiple things so for example my x y z and t are two three four five because it's easy to type these numbers and if i want to delete x i want to delete t let's see can we delete together yes we can because we are not getting an error let's try to print all these x y z t yeah it is saying that x is not defined because we have deleted x so let's remove x see now it will say that uh, y is not available because we have deleted that also let's try to print z and t now it is giving the output z is 4 and t is 5. So I hope variable now you understood very well. Now let's talk about constant. Constant are not very frequently used in Python. But uh, still if you want to create some constant. There are some inbuilt constant obviously. But if you want to create some constant. Then what you can do is you need a new file here. And you need to create the constant. For example I am creating the constant pi is equal to 3.14 any constant any fixed value that this is a constant and this is the value which is never going to change right and uh, i'm writing it in capital letters so it's more of a convention it's not a strict rule but just to make it uh, different from the variables which we have defined right so we just uh, write the constant and their values there and we need to save this as a python file dot py extension if you don't know python file in ipython notebook uh, you may want to watch the video where we have discussed in detail let me show you how we can save it there are different uh, options saving it in drive or github or something like that or we can even download this as python file or ipython notebook as of now i am going to download this as python file so you can see here this is the python file which i have just created you can always open this file and you can see in this file there would be just two line of code so we have created the constant but if i uh, want to 
check what is the value of pi here. In the original file, it is saying that pi is not defined because pi is not there in this file. Pi, pi is there in the file which we have created, the Python file, right? So if you, uh, if, if for some purpose in your project you are using some specific value which you want to save as constant, so you put all those values in a Python file and now you need to import that Python file here and then you can use the value of those constant. How you can do that? Because I am using Colab, I need to upload this file to my environment. If you are using some other ID, if you are using some other ID on your local machine, you don't need to upload and all so on. You can directly import it from uh, the folder where you have saved this, right? So let me just upload it. It is there in downloads and okay, it's there with the name Scratchpad. Okay, yeah. So we can rename this also. Just let me rename constant.py. Yeah, it is renamed now, right? And uh, what I can do here is instead of directly directly printing pi, I need to first import this module which we have just created. What is the module? Don't worry about that. We will talk about all these things later in uh, great detail. So we have imported. Now this file is accessible to me. And now if I print pi, it is going to print the value, hopefully. And it is, okay, okay. Uh, I need to tell, again it is looking for the uh, constant pi in the existing file. I need to tell that you need to find the value from constant module. We will see uh, using functions from a module later in the course. Don't worry about that. As of now, just to show you that if you want to use those constant in your existing file, you can use import constant to import that dot pi file and then from that you can access whatever constant you have created. So this is how we can uh, get the value of constant. Although we rarely use constant, so that's enough about variable and constant and you might come across the word literals somewhere, literals. So when you read from multiple sources, people call them literals together. These are nothing but variables and constant. And uh, I can save this file in my Google Drive from here or otherwise I can copy this file to drive. That way it will create a copy. Let me show you. If I do that, it will create a copy and uh, here you can see the copy of this file. So this file you can either delete or you can uh, do some more rough work and here is the copy. So now you can rename this file. This is already there in your Google Drive. So if you want, you can rename this file and it would be there in your Google Drive. If you are using GitHub, you can save it on GitHub also. I will show you all these things one by one in the form of short videos and I will Make you comfortable with not only Python, but data analysis, statistical concept. And slowly and gradually, I will introduce Git and GitHub. Slowly and gradually, I will also introduce some efficient coding tips, some statistical analysis method. So stay tuned. There is so much to share with you. And I am trying to make the video simple and short duration so that you enjoy and you do practice after you watch this video you get time to do practice of that particular concept. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more on these lines, subscribe to my channel.